I did a, an, a massive hey -o. The microphone was muted. Hardware muted. The whole time. I'm out of breath. Sorry, you're not getting another one. That's it. That's all I had in me for today. How are we doing, everyone? So good to see you all. Mothman, Centaur, Floppa Studios, Tiny Devil Games, Nicholson Morrow, J. Jack, Codes himself, and Cubis Dev. Hello! How are we doing today? Hey, yo, into the void. Bevan, hello, good to see ya. Oh, man, how are we doing today? How's everyone's day going? Floppa, I would love to say that, but the problem is I don't know if it would get me in trouble. Because I, I don't speak children these days. <laughs> Hold on, one second. Let me translate this. What? <laughs> who the... Who... What is all this? <laughs> what am I... What am I seeing on 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 this? Skibidi toilet, you're so skibidi. It's French. Is it? Is it French? I'm sure there's something French. I mean I I, I picked that up from the d days. D-E-S, right? The day. But uh Where 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 are my Quebecers when I need them? <laughs> In a whimsical world where toilets come to life, a brave plumber sets out on a quest to save the kingdom. Floppa, what have you brought? Which corner of the internet have I discovered because of this? What is all this? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Whew! All right. A horrible one, <laughs> says Mothman Centaur. Good night. Okay. Woo! Um, sorry, one second. I got a quick, quick text I need to answer. Um, perfect. Okay, great. It came from the Skibidi. Dollar sign, sticking tongue out, face man. <laughs> See, like, okay, Nicholson knows what's going on. I have no clue. It, saying it came from the Skibidi is like saying it came from the Blurgenflirts. Like, I don't know what a Skibidi is. It's a Gen Alpha YouTube cartoon. <laughs> Skibidi Toilet Series? There's a whole series. Oh, you know what? I do remember seeing this get recommended to me once, and I watched like 30 seconds of it, and I was like, I have no clue what any of this is. And I looked in the comments, and they were all like, this is the greatest cinematic masterpiece. I can't believe that this guy is continuing this. What a great series. And like, I was just like, people actually genuinely are finding value in this. It's not just a meme. I do not get it just at all. <laughs> When your children grow up, you'll learn it. You'll have to. Oh, shoot. Don't go down that path. Ah, <laughs> oh, y'all are a bunch of silly goobers. Big silly goobers. Oh, goodness. It was like, uh... On, on the YouTube comments for the, uh... It's a feature short of the... Uh, Genshin Impact audio where someone you know everyone was saying like Minecraft right and on one of those comments I said yeah I can't wait to see what Notch makes next and then like 13 comments came right after that saying bro he hasn't even been at Mojang for like a decade I'm like guys this is why I said his next game you bunch of goobers what are you talking <laughs> why did we need to go through this oh my goodness um <laughs> uh, and then there was another comment that said uh, a lot of them were like saying like hey you stole this from Genshin or whatever but then there was one that was like thank you so much for using this sound because 
I, I put everyone who uses this sound on an instant block list. <laughs> so I just replied, sounds good. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and then they came back and they replied and said, please don't thank me. I genuinely hate this sound. So naturally, I, I, I was forced to reply. Sounds good. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Oh, shoot. I hope that's over by the time the children grow up. Q is, oh, you never know. I never would have imagined Minecraft would still be around. You know, when I first played it back in 2012, my brother was like, dude, this thing's amazing. And uh, I tried it out and I played it for like 20 minutes. I was like, okay, it's kind of interesting. What's the next thing? <laughs> I never, never would have imagined that it captured generations of interest. Um, so, you know take that into account whenever I critique anything. <laughs> it's skibidi, not skibidi. Uh, skaboodles? It's, it's the skaboodles. Uh, yeah, I think I saw that in, in that movie about the Star Wars. <laughs> Easy way to get comment engagement cue is, yeah, for real. It's a thing you gotta learn. <laughs> Forced. <laughs> Minecraft is solid. It is. I mean, you know, clearly. Clearly, it's it's struck a chord. I mean, it's digital Legos for the past, what, 12 years? It's pretty good. Joe's opinion isn't four generations. <laughs> yeah, the Skibbly Dutes, Flupa. Yeah, I've, uh, I've heard of the Skibbly Dutes. Ooh, Cubus Dev. All right. Until like 16 or so. Uh, well, I mean, I, when was Minecraft's release? Like, the full release? Because I know they had, like, alphas and stuff you could play in 2010. Um, 2011. November 2011. That makes sense, because I played it in January 2012. So, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, next stream, we just see him in a scooby <laughs> in a scooby dudes costume. Alright, let me go grab Artemis. I'll be right back. Could you predict Dwarf Fortress? Nobody could predict Dwarf Fortress. Holy cow. I have yet to get into Dwarf Fortress, but it's one of my, like, long-term passion goals is to do a really big, long Dwarf Fortress play. Maybe we'll do that on a cozy stream someday. That would be fun. Try and get into the Steam version of Dwarf Fortress. Because I, I do need graphics. I'm sorry, I can't do ASCII characters. As cool and rad as it is, I've just always bounced off of it. But, um, the, uh, the visual version, I could, uh, I could, I could do that. Um, okay, all right, Artemis and Marvel, coming up. Played back when it was ASCII only, it was so lost. Yeah, it's rough, it's rough. Because at least in Rogue, you had a lot of white space, right? Like, you were the at symbol, but there was a lot of empty space that you could maneuver around. And Dwarf Fortress is just like, blam, everything is there, it's really rough. Um, if you're gonna get one, I guess get Bull. Uh, well, I mean, isn't the original Dwarf Fortress free or something? I don't know. I played it without paying for it, I'm pretty sure, many, many, many years ago. Okay, the dog's in me. Okay, we'll be right back. Gotta get the dogs. Be right there. Here we go. There's Marvel. There's Marvel. And there's ah. Artemis. Okay, all right. Yeah, that was too much, Artemis. All right, come here, Missy. Come here, come here, Okay. Whenever I pick up Marvel, she thinks it's like time to go play with him. And he does not like that. Okay. Okay. Okay, Artemis. There we go. All right. Say hi. Okay. We good? Are we good now? Yeah. There we go. 
That's the popper. Okay. Thank you for your patience, Doc. Woo! All right, now get out of my office. <laughs> it's particularly hard bringing them in when we've got the baby on the carrier. Surprisingly difficult. There we go, and that should make the invisibility cloak better. Okay. Woo! All right, what have y'all been up to? Okay, flop out, no, no promises. If we, maybe we'll set that as a special streamathon goal or something, or, or subathon or whatever they're called. If we get to 7,000 subs, I'll watch all 60 episodes on stream. <laughs> Yeah, anti that was my problem too. And it was my problem with Minecraft, frankly, and all these wiki games. I just don't have the time to like pour through a giant crowdsourced manual, you know? It's rough. Okay, dogs, yes. Baby and dog. We should have done a hat tower first, you guys suck. <laughs> Watch Johnson play Caves of Kud for a few streams. Crazy Rogue likes it. Oh, Caves of Kud. That sounds really familiar. Hold on, let me pull that up. Caves of Kud. I have heard that on the roguelike reddits, that it's like the classic um, thing, right? Funny enough, when I look this up, <gasps> I only find uh, Caves of Kud soundtrack and then a couple of other options, and then Furry Backrooms, which has a picture of a werewolf on it. <laughs> and then Only Up Skabitty Together. What have you done? What have you done to me? What have you done to me? <laughs> oh, I even ignored Caves of Kood. Why did I click ignore on this? That's why it wasn't showing up. Uh, let's, uh, bring this in the browser here. Uh, Minecraft is easy, though. I mean, it's easy if you, like, know everything about it. If you don't have anything, if you don't have any knowledge or experience about it, it's pretty opaque. Yes, this is a real baby, Floppa. I don't, <laughs> I don't cart around a doll on my... <laughs> Uh, anti what's your good old question? Um, been trying to tile maps to line them up, but it's hopeless. I'm wondering what else I should use. Ooh, I have PNGs for walls and floors and such. They're all quite different pixel by pixels. Been trying tile maps. Oh, interesting. It's your search history now. Good is from the crazy guy that ported all core systems to Godot in like 48 hours after the Unity instance. Really? Wow, that's crazy. Okay, this is interesting. Thank you, Fortune's Favorite, because I'm, I'm paying attention to this too, because I'm kind of curious. <laughs> uh, use an area 2D and a texture rect sub node with the image saved to it. Interesting, interesting. Uh, Jack, I'd say firstly try just editing your pings to all be the same size, else it may be that you need separate tile maps for each size of ping you have. Oh, that's another interesting solution. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Throw it on the Discord. Okay, Case of Kood is a science fantasy. I like science fantasy. Roguelike epic steeped in retrofuturism, deep simulation, and swaths of sentient plants. Okay. Feels like they're trying to be clever there, but it just, I don't know, to me it lands a little flat. Come and have it an exotic world and chisel through layers of thousand-year-old civilizations. Okay, so kind of like um, Numenera vibe almost. Yeah, definitely lo-fi graphics, but that's fine. So this looks less of a uh, roguelike and more of a rogue-like, like rogue married dwarf fortress or something. Is that kind of the idea? 
Seems very cool. All right. Jack, it was it was modded because you don't mock pings. It's it's a ping file. <laughs> Floppa, you you okay, bro? Um Okay. Great. Awesome. Cool. Hey. It's been a minute, y'all. It's been a minute. Um, since we've actually done some game dev on this channel. <laughs> it's been a week, I think, since we've actually built anything. Should we build some game? Should we do some game dev? I think we should. I think we should do some game dev. Let's do some game dev. 2D Fighter, how it going? It going very good. How are you, 2D Fighter? How's life? Uh, we just barely did our, uh, introductions and everything, and, uh, yeah. Uh, my wife is telling me to inform you all that Artemis' name has been called the Cake Removal System 3000. Um, <laughs> oh, jeez. Did she get all the cake? My wife made a cake last night. My dog is a horrible counter surfer. I don't like where this text conversation is going. No, no. All right, Floppa, you you need to go like find someone. <laughs> you need to you need you need to get taken care of a little bit. You need someone to just hold you for a minute. <laughs> Okay, do you also say guinea pig for JPEG? <laughs> what? I, I didn't, but I'm gonna now, because that's amazing. What file format do you need? Do you need ping or guinea pig? Or, or is it a uh, uh, peanut butter? Cubis, you don't want to know. You don't want to know what's happening on the YouTube side right now. It's, it's YouTube being YouTube. <laughs> people are people are are, uh, are 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 being YouTubes. <laughs> caramel cake. Ooh, I love a good caramel cake. 2D fighter. Love a good caramel cake. Okay. So here's the deal. Um, I think for the next few months. Don't hold me to this. Hey, see you later, Vevin. Thanks so much for hanging out. It's so good to see you. What what I what I what I think I'm planning on doing here is oh you know what we need to change our sizes here. Um, go back to our whiteboard. Uh, all right. <laughs> Floppa. You need a break, friendo. Let's let's take a breather, and then and then when we're when we're done, you you can come back and <laughs> come hang out. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> it is pronounced peanut butter. Listen, I'm gonna say peanut butter over GIF every single time. I can't say GIF; it's gonna eat my heart. It's it's either GIF or it's peanut butter. Um. So, what I am looking to do here is kind of rebuild Overload, because I want this to be my project for the next few times. I saw, I heard some people kind of voting for that in chat yesterday when we were talking about, you know, which project should we work on, and then uh, I was going through the uh, ratings on, on the games, and I saw people kind of excited about the idea. And by the way, thank you everyone who's been playing and rating those games on the Game Jam. I uh, really deeply appreciate that. We still have time. We're going to be uh, counting that up until Friday. So, uh, you know, it's not too late. Definitely go check it out. But uh, uh, check out all those wonderful submissions and, and give your thoughts on, on their uh, just passion and, and creativity. So I think uh, we're, we're going to be sticking with Overload for a little bit. And I want to refactor this with 
everything that I know now about Godot on how to um, make this much more cleaner of, uh, of an architecture and how things are built. So um, we'll be working on this for the next few months until July's Game Jam. And then we'll do another Game Jam in Godot. And then after that, I'll probably jump into Unreal and start learning Unreal. So that's the current plan. Okay. So without further adieu, and other words I can also mispronunciate, let's, let's try and clean everything up as well as we can. <laughs> And this is where I need to um, I need to do some research into like how to structure a Godot file because I was thinking um, maybe it would be good to uh, you know just start cleaning things up where I see that there are problems, but now I'm kind of thinking if I go down that route. I may do stuff and then end up having to redo it. So I'm going to look up the Godot style guide. Okay, so they do recommend using snake case for folder and file names. Um, let me actually bring this over. And we'll shrink Godot a little bit so we can all see what is going on. So use snake case and then use Pascal case for node names as this matches built-in node casing. Okay, well, that's an easy thing we can go through and start patching up here. So, so if I add a new node, yeah, yeah, they're using Pascal case. Okay, let's tidy that up. This is gonna be kind of a lot of busy work for probably a, a few days of trying to get everything tidied up and uh, operating better. change that um change that and this may shoot i hope it doesn't i hope godot is smart enough but this may break all of our connections and everything renaming things which i boy really hope not fill a parent turn timer fill in health block man i was uh, all over the place on these naming conventions <laughs> Sometimes you don't really see how bad things are until until you kind of go back and look at old stuff. Player health block. HP player label. Block player label. Let's rename panel two as well. What what is this? It's just the block background. Okay. Um, block panel. We'll say. Block panel villain. And then player. Okay. Timer bar. And timer label. How's everyone's projects doing, by the way? What are we all up to that is wild and impossible and exciting? Superpower count label, which we may not actually need anymore. I don't know. We'll see. Speed demon timer. Power chain lightning. Power static shield, and I'm realizing, oh shoot, I hope this carries through back to the <laughs> the nodes that I'm bringing in here, and I don't have to rename things in the uh, original scene as well, which I probably will. Power brawl. Uh, quick sound. Yeah, boy, I was all over the place on these naming conventions. Antivi has some forbidden tile map usage going on. Ooh, that sounds exciting. It's an esphagus file because he needed good scaling. I don't get it, Cubus. Let's learn Unreal together. I have Unreal Fighter 2D template. I'd like to understand more. I should be back streaming then. Hey, 
That'd be awesome, 2D Fighter. I'd love to do that together. That'd be rad. Forbidden is bad. It is, okay. For, forbidden is bad, but it also means lots of learning, which is great. It is HP, right? Shoot. Yeah, okay. Uh, hey, off-grid game dev. How you doing today, friend? How's work? How's, how's your project going? How's the cozy farming? That definitely did not turn into a uh, bullet heaven game for a little bit on a certain day. Each tile is 10 by 90 pixels. Like, what is that? I don't know, Jack. I've seen weirder things. I've seen people do tile maps with like one pixel at a time, and then that gets repeated. How are you supposed to know the patterns until you go through and learn about them? Uh, Twitter made yes, off grid. <laughs> oh, shoot, absolutely. Okay. Rad. Rad, rad, rad. Uh, by the way, you just, to share some encouragement to people, you never know what's gonna go kind of viral or not. This It's a feature short, it's about to hit 215,000 views. Which like, let's be real as far as shorts go, that's still kind of small potatoes, but considering my next closest short was like 10,500, you know, it's a big deal. All right, we got ads. I'll keep on renaming stuff in the background, nobody needs to see that. I, we'll be back. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back. Let's see, I can't even tell if that... Yeah, there we go, okay. Uh, Game Maker is asking for people to submit shorts for their Instagram. I just don't know what to submit. Oh, very cool. Reels for Instagram, sure. Uh, you could do one that's more educational for them. I'm sure they would love it. What, about... yelling about how they don't have built-in controllers or UI? <laughs> 
I don't know what I could do for them that would be educational. Um, I feel like Matharu and everyone and, and um, what's the guy? Steven? Forget. There's another big game maker guy. Um, so, uh, I don't know what I could do that would really be informational for them. I'm not very good at that engine or, or, or anything, really. <laughs> it's meant to promote others, so not Matharu. I mean, sure, but like, I don't know. I feel like I'm the last person you want teaching someone how to build stuff in Game Maker. Or or at all. I I am not the person people look up to when it comes to coding. <laughs> I'm very much infantile as far as that goes. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's always hard to kind of understand yourself. Uh and so if other people disagree, I'd, I mean, I'd be curious to hear what uh, sort of value people think I might be able to provide. <laughs> Papa, welcome back. <laughs> Good to see you, how are you? Relic transition. Actor parent. This is actor HP. I wish I had one tenth of your risk so I could make. Oh, please. Please, off grid. Actor block. No, heavens to Betsy. Uh, you've got more knowledge in Game Maker in your pinky than I do in my entire game making body. Game over. Return to main menu. Okay. Game over. Return to main menu. I really need to make this more atomic. I saw someone talking about using an atomic structure for your components in Godot, and I was like, yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Like, I totally get it. Symbol parent. Whew. Rename all these. Perfect. Oh, okay. Reload sprites. Well, this is a lesson I won't soon forget. I'll tell you that much. When you have to go through and rename everything in your project, you learn the style guide. Maybe I just need hats. <laughs> Nobody cared about me before I put on the hats. Um, but the hats honestly came organically. They came from Foolbox, who saw me early on and said that I looked like Matt Smith from Doctor Who. And so I said, ooh, I'll have to get a fez. And then it just kind of evolved from there into the, the ridiculousness that it is now. Uh... I need babies and, and hats. <laughs> I'll tell you what, off grid. Uh, I think people do think the baby is cute, but as soon as baby starts crying, every time, the view count goes down. <laughs> people instantly leave as soon as they hear the baby cry. Every time, every time. Uh, Fuzzy Buzzy, hey, welcome in. Good to see you. How are you, friend? How's your G how's your uh, not GTA like? I always say it's a GTA like. It's not. It's the Twisted Metal like. How's your Twisted Metal like going? Floppa, <laughs> you are more than welcome to be here. I love having you here, but you keep you keep spamming. We're gonna have to do another timeout. This is fair warning, okay? <laughs> But other than that, love having you here. All right, and then we need to get rid of pre-turn there. Okay, great. Everything theoretically has been renamed to Pascal Case. We did it, Reddit. Okay, what's next in our style guide? Um, 
ignoring specific folders, case sensitivity. Okay. It's recommended to stick to snake case naming for all files in the project and lowercase characters in general. So we need to go through our files and folders and snake case them. Ooh, that's gonna be annoying. <laughs> oh, shoot. All right. That's all good, scenes. This is gonna be a long one. Okay, all right, there we go. Let's go into scenes, let's, oh shoot. This may not be worth it, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it'll be good. At the very least, it'll, it'll teach me the harsh lesson. Oh geez, super powers. Okay, that's all looking good. File names are looking good there. Okay, relics, we need to change you to relics. And then I think file names are good. Because we, we were doing snake case for file names. For the most part. <laughs> Symbols. Okay. Block. Brawl. Energy. Magnet. Bawa. And UI, I don't want a snake case UI, it's an abbreviation. Oh, that feels gross to do. Ugh. All right. This is good for me, because I mean, even when I was doing snake case, I was still doing it inconsistently. Like sometimes it would be snake Pascal and sometimes it would be different and sometimes it just wouldn't be anything at all it's just uh, a line a string of text with no logic okay all right that's the symbol uh sprites folder good symbols oops cancel symbols who barricade i wish there were more keyboard shortcuts for this bouncy underscore beg and then the rest of those look good lovely good good job joe <laughs> uh our themes are looking good tutorial we need to snake case uh slides we need to revise okay Oh, right, this is the whole thing people were yelling at me about on the final day of, like, some of them have an uppercase and some of them don't. <laughs> oh, shoot. Good times. You know, you, you just, you get hit right in the memories. Uh, hey, Nemphis Macaroon, how you doing today? How's life going for you, Nemphis? Okay. Oops, not you. This one. Audio. Stream. Player 2D. Uh, we could probably get rid of 2D because this game is 2D, right? We don't really need to double clarify that. Load sprite, power block, rename. Okay. And then timers we can rename. And turn timer. So what we're doing right now for all of you who are joining us uh, afterwards for this riveting content is uh, <laughs> uh, we're going through and amending my uh, overload project to be in line with the Godot style guide. So we're going through and putting all of our file names in snake case right now. Sprites. School is getting along, so I guess I'm fine. Well, you know, hey, that's good. For a lot of people, it doesn't get along, so I'm glad. I'm glad it's doing okay for you. Overload sheet. School was one of those weird things for me. I always did so well in school when I was a kid. 
And like all through elementary school, I was always like top of my class. Uh, best at reading, best at writing, best at uh, math and everything, typing, all that sort of stuff. I was crazy good. We're going to ignore gym, but uh, <laughs> the rest of it, I was great. Um, and then as soon as junior high hit, I really fell behind hard. And I couldn't keep up. I, uh, I had my first math test in junior high, and I didn't know what X was. I had no clue. And... Uh, I just realized I had been spacing out for months in class, and I didn't even know I was doing it because I got so used to not really having to pay attention in school that it was just normal. Well, you know, 20 years later, I understand I have uh, ADD, and it's like, oh, okay, no, now, now that all makes sense. <laughs> I get that now. I was really good at those things because of video games, and then... Uh, and then when we got into things that video games weren't covering, I was no longer good at them. <laughs> uh, this much refactoring without pressing play can't end. Well, fine, you chickens. Let's see what we got. It's all fine, except for all of these errors. <laughs> now, I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. We were going to have to fix a lot of this. Um, doop. real talks happening happy for it yeah yeah hey poke john good to see you how are you pre-earn <laughs> let's try that again Jack, I don't pay attention in class, but I'm still getting by somehow, still waiting to get sucker punched in an exam. Well, that's what happened to me. That's what happened to me. Um, oh, right, because it's not uh, that anymore. Yeah. Oops. There we go. Let's try that. Let's turn off our chill fi so we don't have competing musics. Uh, Nemphis Macaroon, shoot, I'm an open book. What's up? How can I help? Speed Demon Timer is no longer here. It is now this one. Speed Demon Timer. Uh, we talk about instant feedback a lot with ADD. Video games are great for that, but pen and paper not as much. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Queen Anne, yeah. Um, okay, turn timer needs to get fixed up. Where's turn timer being declared? Yeah, um, absolutely, Queen Anne. Um, you need uh, something to kind of give you reinforcement, and you need uh, um, you need big, audacious, hairy goals, which is why we're doing what a big part of what we're doing. I mean. That's what works for my brain, is like, we're going to do something kind of outrageous. Um, okay, pitch scale, click sound. Click sound is now going to be broken. There we go. Okay. I remember my mom sent me... Uh, Fix. No, wait, no, those are the scenes, so that should actually be fine. Ooh. Power array. At I. Power chip. Ah, here we go. It's these ones. Uh, sent me a, a video by a gal who does ADHD content, and I, I don't remember her name, unfortunately. I could probably look it up, though. Uh, and she was saying that, like, she wrote a book on ADHD, and she made it ADHD-friendly, and she knew that she wanted to do it that way instead of you know, not. And she said this was a book that, like, no one has ever really written before. And it was a ridiculous goal to say, like, how can we condense 300 pages of information in a format that people with ADHD could actually read? And that was crucial for her to uh, really uh, continue uh, work on the project because otherwise you just get bored. So. Okay, cool. Great. Looks like we're working. Everything's good. Uh, a couple of twins have a big bro Oh, hold on. Sorry, Queen Anne. <laughs> LMAO. 
Automat, auto, Automata is so ridiculous. Um, a couple of twins have a big brother. The product of the twins and the big brother is 20 years old. How old is the big brother? Memphis, Mac Memphis Macaroon, this is not a question I feel particularly qualified to answer, but I'll give it a shot. A couple of twins have a big brother. The product of the twins and the big brother is 20. How old is the big brother? What, 10? Because if the big brother is 10, then the twins can both be 5. And then that equals 20. Is a big goal supposed to be something good for ADD or ADHD? That would explain a lot of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Blah, blah. I don't I don't determine the length, man. I just hit time out and, and it goes. It's not up to me. That's a YouTube thing. <laughs> um but yeah, Queen Anne, that uh this gal at least was saying that it's helpful to have big outrageous goals. And she she talked about one of her viewers whose son had ADHD, and this son had determined at an early age, for some reason. They wanted to be an accountant for George Lucas. And this mom, instead of shooting that down and being like, I don't know, kid, like by the time you're in during the workforce, like he may not even be around anymore, you know? She said, okay, well, if you want to be George Lucas's accountant, then you need to be um, doing X, Y, and Z thing. And, and, and it got him through college and he's working as an accountant for Disney. So he says, yes, I, I, I became an accountant for George Lucas. <laughs> Okay, we need to rename that. Okay, that's looking good. Okay. Cool. Anything else in here I need to be aware of? Seems like we're doing okay. Okay. All right. I think we're probably okay, at least uh, for now. Okay, I do not control the speed at which lobsters get YouTube timeout. <laughs> x times x times y equals 20. x is less than y, x equals 2, y is 5 works. Oh, the product, not the sum. Okay, got it, yeah. See, <laughs> ADD. Also, I, I don't remember product being used very often in math classes in my math classes. We never really uh, used that terminology. Okay. Okay, cool. We have a lot of errors. <laughs> here, right here. We need to get this. This is good. This is catching all of our stuff for us. That's great. Um, okay, and then you. Speed Demon Timer? No, not found Speed Demon. But it's not... Hmm. That seems wrong. Okay, we're not getting that error anymore. Okay. Yeah, we're good. All right. Great. Great! Okay. All right, you smarty pants. You go do your math over in the chat. Meanwhile, the cool kids will rename files for 20 minutes. All right, good. Uh, what you got for us? Gonna go take a nap. Good night, Fox. Hey, thanks so much for hanging out, Fuzzy Buzzy. Good to see you. Thanks for jumping in. Um, It was a friend's 10-year-old homework. 10-year-old? Man, I remember doing story questions all the time in grade school, and, like, it drove me crazy. I hated those things, because it was... I, I understand they were trying to be, like, uh, you know... It'll help people see how it applies in real life, and it'll aid in learning comprehension. And I was like, nah, man, I just want the numbers. Please just give me the numbers. I don't want to have to, like sort through all these extra details and everything. Please just let me, like, figure out... Give me the problem and I will give you the answer. Don't don't throw all these red herrings and, and stuff that my brain really wants to latch onto, but are not the right things to pay attention to. Okay. Um... Great. 
Version control. Oh, you know what? We haven't done a git push in a little bit. Let's do a git push. Learning to create the model is important to learn how to do. Sure. And that's fair. I just hated doing it. Especially since, like, they're always worded so confusingly. Like, I don't know. Like, that situation, right? Of the whole twins and then the, the thing. Like, it just, that all feels so obtuse as to be irrelevant, in my opinion, at least. Okay. Um, casing titles. According to Godot's guide. Okay. Commit. If you buy five watermelons, what's the sun's gravitational pull on Pluto? Yeah, for real. Oh, shoot. It reminds me of that classic... Uh, <laughs> the classic example of a... Um, Uh, class on um, how to like gauge the weather and it said using only a barometer can you figure out how tall a built this building is that I'm showing you and then the answer was uh, I would take the barometer and go to the uh, the janitor and say excuse me janitor I have a very nice barometer here. If I give it to you, can you tell me how big this, <laughs> this building is? <laughs> and I love that. I think it's amazing. All right. Commit. Okay. Great. All right. Push. I think they could have been worded better in general. They're important for critical thinking, but they're likely better ways to do that as well. That's kind of where I stand, Queen Anne. And once again, you know, this is just my brain. You know, other people probably have different experiences. Someone had to create Godot before it could be given to you. Learn to create the model helps you better understand and use the model. I don't disagree, Fortunes. I don't disagree. I just think the model needs to actually have some sort of root in reality and make contextual sense. You know, just these random, obtuse word salad questions. I don't find that helpful. Take the barometer, drop it from the roof, and measure the time it takes to fall. Yeah, Cubis, exactly. <laughs> oh, shoot. All right. Um, Godot aims to be VCS friendly and generate mostly readable and mergeable files, version control plugins. I mean, okay, so we, we, we did all this. We're just going to go next. Troubleshooting. That's not... That's your whole style guide was on how to name things? That's the entirety of your style? Okay. <laughs> okay. So... This is my concern now, is how do we structure this now? How do we go back and refactor this game so as to make it good? Because all of this is a, it's a mess. This is all a mess, right? Everything in here is just 100% um, game jam code, right? So wanna want to get rid of all that. Um, throw it on the smart kid and he'll tell you the answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness y'all are silly you're all so silly okay um it's only naming since games have really different needs for structure okay I hear that a lot Cubis at the same time I insist there are there have to be commonalities, at least as starting points, right? Like, I know that's true, because every time I type anything in here, I have everyone screaming at me that it's the wrong way to do it. 
There's a famous joke and story about a physics teacher asking a question about using a barometer to measure a building's height. One student answered in three different ways, all correct. None the intended solution, just to prove a point. That's fantastic, Fortunes. I love that. Okay. Um... Hey, Alistios, good to see ya. How you doing, friend? Okay. So I need to, I'm gonna reorganize these things. I think it makes sense to have all these together. I'm just gonna say, um, symbol declaration, uh, symbol loading. Sure. Hey, Captain Fubar, good to see ya. How are you today? How how is life going for ya? Can spawn equals true. Um, this is superpower stuff, which we're not even really using. Um, deprecated superpower variables. Um, we have a, a okay. We need to let's put the timers next to each other. Timers. Um, and then, um, scene transitions. Scene transitions, um, take all that, put it in there, and then, yes, that. I'm gonna change this, because we're not, it's not a const anymore. So we'll take that off. Okay. Turn start UI. Okay. Lovely jubbly. This is going to bother me. <laughs> so I was right on it for one of them nice. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Uh, you can use the barometer as a ruler, even if you... Oh, and we have ads starting in just a second. Uh, if, if you don't know how long it is, it's always one barometer long. If you know what I mean, you can measure the shadow it makes on the ground without it two times a day and use trigonometry. There you go. There are standards, yes, but like 20 different ways to do this. But like, what are the standards? That's what I need to know. What are the standards? Um, reference of distance, measuring shadows, time to hit the ground from dropping it. It was very clever. So there you go. There you go. This is a terrifying user interface, says Daniel Noah. <laughs> uh, this is good. Oh, Daniel. Yeah. And we do have ads. We're jumping in. We'll be right back. We're going to pause. We'll be back in just a little bit. Um... Cubus answered the third third way. There you go. One of the ways is just walking up the stairs and measuring the height the long way. <laughs> I love that. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, we'll be right back.
Okay, welcome, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, Alistios, this is, we're, we're polishing up Overload. We're gonna keep on moving on that one. I got a couple of votes when I was asking people which project they might like to see continue moving forward. And the uh, Game Jam submission feedback, people seemed interested in it. So we'll, you know, we'll keep on using this as our learning project for the rest of the time that we have here for the next little bit. And uh, those, are, those are quite the cocktails of jam, Alistios. That's impressive. I'm, I'm kind of like a raspberry guy through and through. Strawberry can be nice. Usually it's way too sweet, though. So I, I tend to go to the raz. Um, okay. Oh, goodness. This guy doesn't weigh very much. But after multiple hours of being in here, it does, you know, it causes the back to have some issues. All right, um... By the way, we do have just a few more minutes. Jeez, where does the time go? We just have a few more minutes until, uh... We're gonna jump into our analysis for the day. We're gonna jump into backpack battles. We're gonna do a run in backpack battle. I think that'll be really fun. Okay, um... Scene transitions, and then we have our... Uh, power list. Powers. We have scene transitions, powers, timers. Um, this should go up with the superpower variables that we don't really use anymore. Uh, powers should probably be from an architectural, information architecture standpoint, next to the superpower block. Symbol loading, okay. At least this is starting to like flow a little bit better. That's why you got with a mix of rhubarb and strawberry, which gives you a good contrast to cut the sugar taste. You know, rhubarb is one of those things that kind of has been missing in my life. I haven't really, um, like a rhubarb pie. I don't know if I've ever had a rhubarb pie, like maybe once in my life. It's one of those flavors that has just kind of gone its merry way without me. Um, it doesn't look quite as good, does it? Okay. Hmm. I think the next thing here is going through my um, node tree, because it feels like there's things in here that I don't even know what it is or what it's doing. And like, I'm wondering, is it, is it even is it even doing anything? You know, like, can I delete something and then undo it? Yes, yes I can, okay. I'm gonna delete it and then run. Okay, things are running. I'm gonna leave it deleted. <laughs> Grew up as a kid with a grandpa that had a garden and that was part of what he was growing. Nice, nice. I can't do gluten and I avoid sugar as much as I can. Two reasons I haven't had pie in a while. There we go, there we go. Floppa, I'd love to stop. I don't want to time you out, brother, but you just keep on spamming. So as long as that keeps happening, we're going to keep on doing the timeouts. Uh, so going for adding up to what you already have or restructuring from scratch since you have infinite time now. Well, we don't have infinite time. We've got until the next game jam. So we've got a couple of months to build something that is... At least, you know, releasable for free or something, you know, uh, on a pay what you want or something. I'm not confident enough in my ability to really sell something for a price um, at this point. Who knows? Maybe that'll change. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so we're, we're just refactoring. We're not uh, rebuilding yet because I haven't learned that much to rebuild it in a much better way. I think refactoring is kind of where it's at for me right now. Um, 
so we're gonna this is one thing these um shapes are not quite working right so left uh border and then right border and then these will be the um symbol borders and is there a make unique in here like why is changing one affecting the other and is it because it's like duplicated and it's linked somehow i guess we need to do um a new new rectangle shape 2d right that would make sense oof so so they okay so you're like making a a variable like something that you can store and bring back later on which is interesting but you know what we do need to actually bring it a lot higher now that i think about it because we want we're spawning the symbols up here and we don't want the symbols like rolling off the edge of the of the map all right let's tighten that up Doop. there we go tighten this up Doop. Ooh, we can tighten that up too. Nice. There we go. Good. Okay. Make the sub resource unique. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. As Sundown would say, all you need is some if-then-else statement and a lot of hard work and you can do anything. That's that's certainly true, Elistios. It annoys me that they're different sizes. I was thinking about that, Jack, actually. I was trying to think, do we want them to be different sizes or not? And I kind of like them being different sizes. Oh, turn on grid snapping. Makes it easier to position. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thanks, Fubar. I didn't even think about that. Um, and I'm trying to think, do we want them to be different sizes or not? And I could see it going both ways, where they should be equal, and that will create uh, a feeling of equality, in a sense, right? By making the player size bigger, though, it gives more space for the side that's going to have more information on it uh, and kind of gives a little more emphasis to the player. And I think those are both good things. That being said, we get to see less of the enemy just from an art standpoint, and I don't love that. So I don't know. I think the big thing is it needs to feel intentional. And right now it's just off enough that I don't think it feels intentional. And frankly, it wasn't intentional. It's just kind of like it happened to be that way. And now I, I'm like, oh, yeah, I kind of like that idea. Um, why is one overload bigger than the other? Because they are different. Uh, fonts. Yeah. Yeah, that's in all caps and everything. Yeah, it's a good point, Jack. It's not necessarily something I'm really concerned about right now, but it is a good point. Um, so that's 10, and then this is what, eight? And then maybe I did it that way on purpose. Maybe I did that way, that way to be like, oh, look, it's the player. I don't know. And we'll just title case it for now. Yeah, there needs to be more work done to differentiate between the two, really, but whatever. We'll deal with that later. Have I worked with theming yet? A little bit, yeah. We do have a couple of themes. We got buttons, button themes and stuff like that. Uh, but not a ton, Fubar. Not not a lot. I mean, I haven't done a ton in pretty much anything in Godot, so. <laughs> Other than, like, signals. I've done a lot of signals for this project. <gasps> okay. Um... Character stat background. Uh, let's rename this to be villain. And then I want to reorganize everything to be um, in their own groups. So it's a little more legible. So we're going to move the symbol borders up. And symbol background. Timers. We can drag way far down. Drag all those timers down, and then our, our canvas layer needs to go ahead of everything. Sprite 2D2, I don't think you're doing anything. I'm gonna delete you and run the game. Let's see.
Okay, yeah, looking good. Hey, Grumble of Pugs! Why is this man so nicely dressed? Because I knew you were coming today, Grumble. That's why. Because I knew you were coming today. How are you doing? How are the Fruit Bat Adventures? It's good to see ya. Between you and too much tomato coming in now, like... I'm one of the cool kids. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, group these. Can I group them? You can group things, right? Right? I have a group right here. Does it have to be a node? Can you not just group things? You have to, like, put them under a parent node? Because that would be annoying. <laughs> that would be really annoying. Like, I want to batch all these powers together, and I want to batch all the sounds together, and... That means that I'm probably not doing this quite right. I'm probably doing this in a way that is making people really angry at me. Got the wrong background in the wrong place. Uh, good trailer is almost done. And Mac build. Whoa, you're doing a Mac build? And multiplayer? <laughs> Jeez, Grumble. You are a, 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 a glutton for punishment. My goodness. At a simple note as parent. Attention, node pathing changes if you reference it in code. And I do a bunch of places. We'll have to fix that up. But, like, is that worth it, though? Um... Do I have the group made already? No. No, queen. So, like... I'm, I, I feel like if it's getting this complex already without doing anything really special, that tells me that I'm probably not doing this in the way that is efficient for Godot, right? So, like, the powers, I guess I could understand that um, maybe you should load in data dynamically instead of having it, like, predefined in a bunch of children nodes, maybe, and then you just have the one thing, and then it is set with different variables. Um, but the audio, I don't know what you would do for that. It feels like you'd have to have some sort of parent for that, because you only, can only have one stream player per sound. So that seems weird to me. Imran Khan on YouTube. Hello, welcome in. Good to see you. Are you the only one here on YouTube? I don't know. Quite possibly. You may be the only one on YouTube right now. We're we're jumping with about uh, 17 people over on, on Twitch, according to my numbers. So. Uh, multiplayer is taking a back seat for a bit. Good. I'm glad to hear it, Grumble. <laughs> Take care of yourself. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, you can have your own jukebox, a singleton scene that manages all your sound effects, music, etc. Interesting. So that's kind of like the signal bus idea, where you have a centralized source for all that stuff. Okay. Okay. I think I'm kind of starting to understand how Godot does this. Where you kind of lump things into a parent as much as possible, and then you, like programmatically pull what you need from that parent, right? Um, I have an autoload that's a node with a script. Okay. For your music. Okay. Alright. Hey, Alistios on YouTube. Hello, hello. Yeah, welcome on in, Imran Khan. Good to see ya. Um... Okay, so, once again, just trying to wrap my brain around how Godot expects you to structure things. So we have signal buses, we've got jukeboxes. I don't think you can really do the same thing with, like, sprites and enemies. And stuff. Like, you can't have, like, a general universal enemy object, right? That you then pull and load everything into. That feels really weird and dumb. But... Also, maybe. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad. I'm glad the uh, the algorithm graced you uh, with with this. Glad to see you, Imran. You switch your well. Welcome. Wonderful. Uh, I think I have my audio players as children of it, but yeah, you kinda could, says Jack. Okay. 
so like okay let's let's take this to an actual example right um let's say uh Um, for, uh, villain, name, bottom, border. Oh, I've got that wrong too. Okay. Let's throw that down to the players. Villain health block, you come up. Okay. And then player label, you come down. And timer bar, you go up. player comes down so so let's say sorry i'm getting distracted i'm really good at that um oh shoot where'd our player sprite run off to <laughs> it's right there uh okay yeah he's totally gone wow lots of stuff is broken now great <laughs> Uh, what genre of game is this, uh, Imran? This is a... I'm calling it a dexterity roguelike. Oh, he's behind things. Yeah, this is this is ahead of everything. Okay, I gotta fix that. It's a dexterity roguelike. So if you've played Helldivers 2 with, like, the stratagems, it's basically a roguelike based entirely off of that. And it came out of the Fox Hollow Game Jam, which just wrapped up last week. So... Bring this down below the player... Nope. <laughs> Where? What is this? Character graphic background. There we go. Okay. There we go. Then where's the player label? What is happening to all of my stuff? Just bought a PS5 that's having trouble setting up. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Emron. Queen Anne, yes, yeah, sorry, I got distracted. I, man, got distracted by ordering. Um, I, yes, let's use an example in, in like two seconds. <laughs> um, okay, there we go. I think this is all making sense now. Okay, bring it all back. Yeah, we've got stuff still a little bit off. Huh. Okay. Now, our label, why did you all of a sudden totally break? You shouldn't be in there. There we go. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There we go. That's how I can do it. Okay. You can just drag them in. And that's probably uncouth for a lot of reasons, but whatever. Um, do you plan to bring back the relic system? Yes, I'm bringing back the relic system, uh, but I'm going to be changing it. So instead of being relics, I think what I'm going to do, and I, and I need to plan this out and chat about it with everyone and get people's thoughts. But um, what I want to do is replace the relics with changing out powers. So... You'll have, like, your um, slots of things, and then they're going to have different attributes with them of, like, you know, marshals and electricity powers and um, artifacts and leverage those to... to uh, it's, it's not time yet, baby. You gotta, you gotta wait. Although I love the dress. It's very pretty, but it's not time yet. <laughs> um... Kind of like Throne of Bone, where we had the uh, different, ooh, uh, the different uh, the different like minions, right? Kind of doing something similar with this, where uh, we're swapping out powers instead in order to make different builds, and then everything about your character is just right there, and I think that'd be nice. Um, 
keep alt pressed if you want to move it. Alt plus right click on an area in the 2D editor to see all available nodes. Oh, that's great. Oh, Fubar, thank you. Uh, you're continuing this project as <laughs> Fulox. Yeah, so like, uh, it, it got a couple of votes last time we were streaming about it and seeing the feedback in the game jam, people seem to kind of like the concept. So it'll be a fun little thing to, to try out for a little bit. I'm gonna give myself to the end of this time period until the next game jam in order to say done. And then, then we'll just release it, whatever state it's in. So. It's fine, but you might need to rescale things or change the position because some things are relative. Maybe you're talking about the label that I, I fixed, maybe. You a Godot man now. I, I really like Godot. I do. I do full box. Oh, by the way, full box. I do I do quite like Godot. Um it 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 feels very nice in a lot of ways. It also feels very weird in a lot of ways. Um <laughs> always has been. Uh but you know, I'm learning about it and I'm liking it. Uh it's feeling powerful. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be building everything in Godot forever, but I'm enjoying my time with it right now. And as soon as uh, the next game jam starts, uh, I'm going to start learning. Uh, no, sorry. After the next game jam, so I'm going to I'm going to build this in Godot and then do a game our next game jam in the in Godot, and then after that game jam, I'm going to start learning Unreal to then do a uh, game jam in Unreal, and then we'll move to learning Unity, and then do a game jam in Unity. So, there you go. Uh, if we can chain him down, hopefully. <laughs> oh, shoot. Um, Unreal is pretty fu fun to use, says Grumble of Pugs. You are the first person I've heard say it's fun to use. I've heard a lot of like, well, it's really powerful, but um, pretty rough. <laughs> want to be a jack of a trade, master of none. I see. Well, I want to know what the tools are that are available to me. That's what I want, Fullbox. I want to have at least a basic understanding of the different tools available to me. And then, once we have all that, I'll be able to like have a better understanding of which projects should go in which engines, and do it appropriately, right? And I would imagine. I'm probably going to be sticking with Godot just because the allure of having an open source, free, um, non-profit engine is very enticing for me for a lot of reasons. And being able to build stuff in it competently and strongly, and frankly, I think Godot is about to really take off over the next couple of years. Like, I think it's a good, good place to be. So... I like C++ because I like pain. <laughs> You're doing it the right way by trying every engine? I hope so, Grumble. It, it's it's slow, which is the problem. But uh, I think it's helpful, at least for me, and I hope it's helpful for people that are watching, too. Um, I like those values, too, with Godot. It's growing, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Aesthetic Gaming on YouTube. Hello. Welcome in. Good to see ya. Uh, just read most recent passive star tweet on why he chose Godot and explains it all. Uh, interesting. Fubar, do you have a link? Unreal 5 graphics quality is so crazy, and they added AI-generated backgrounds. Yes, I'm sure that learning this tool uh, sure must be a lot of fun. Yeah, so uh, I'm really interested in that, right? I think Unreal might be our first 3D game we build on the stream, um, which is horribly intimidating. <laughs> but we'll see, you know, we'll see. Uh, so, Gaming, thank you. I, I hope it's cool. It's, um, it's uh, we're continue we're polishing up continuing a project that I started for the Fox Hollow Game Jam, and uh, it is a dexterity roguelike, uh, is what I'm calling it. So you have your character on the left, the bad guy on the right, and you have to click these circles, Helldivers two style, along certain pathways in order to um, trigger your abilities and uh, be the superhero you want to see in the world. <laughs> And then Slay the Spire style, you kind of take turns bashing on each other until you win, and then you'll go through and uh, draft new powers to swap out your old ones and kind of customize your build from there. So that's the idea, Aesthetic. It's got a long ways to go, clearly. But um, we're, we're working on polishing it up so it's a little more easy to build on top of and it's a little more maintainable. 
just make a 1D game. Ooh, that'd be fun. Make a game entirely on a 1D plane. Can you do it? You only get one line to make a game. That'd be fun. The AI generated content built in the engine. You, I don't know that that's necessarily in you, Fortunes, because uh, I think that they're doing it in a way that is like they're they're paying artists in order to train the model. Like I'm not against AI in general. I think AI is a powerful tool and it's going to be necessary moving into the future. The problem is how do we do it ethically and do it in a way that like complements and promotes humanity. That's the tricky bit. Um, did I hear Slay the Spire love the game? Yeah, I mean you, I. You, you did, and it, it feels a little janky to, to mention it because it feels like every uh, indie game for the past decade has been referencing Slay the Spire. Um, yeah, 1D is basically one line, so, you know, can, can you make a game out of just a sequential line of dots? And that would basically be SOS, that's Risky Biscuit's educational horror game where you learn Morse code. Uh, you can have a concept that works kind of like in Flatland where you move between 1D and 2D. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. STS2 is coming out, yes, and built in Godot. They uh, scrapped two years of work in Unity and <laughs> threw it into Godot. Oh, shoot. Oh, man, okay. Uh, we do have ads starting in just a second. And uh, we're going to uh, take that ad break because Bezos will boot me off of his platform if we don't. So <laughs> with that being said, the toll collector comes, hark, we'll pause, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Uh, all right, Floppa, go take care. Get some rest in. <laughs> uh, yeah, Fortunes and Queen Anne, I, I agree with you um, that AI kind of ran and, and still is running very uh, rampant. It was like this big exciting thing and stuff is online on the internet for free and like that paradigm didn't exist before of like, okay, sure, people could like steal an image, but like, it was relatively contained, but now that stealing is a lot more widespread and even worse, transparent. That's tough, right? You need to figure out a way to deal with that. Um, the uh, it reminds me of the the Spider-Man movie uh, with with Fubar's comment. Um, 
the the new Spider-Man into the multiverse movie, they did a lot with AI. And they said we never could have done all these weird psychedelic images without the assistance of AI. Like doing that frame by frame would have taken us 10 more years to make this movie. So there's there is an ethical way to do this, and I think we're working that out. Um so I, I, I don't think this is a genie that's going back in the bottle. Frankly, I don't. But I do think we can figure out how to implement it in a way that is productive and uh, builds humanity rather than substitutes it. Animating mouth movements for an animation has been an AI tool for a while. And that helps artists avoid mind-numbing work. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it was, work it was used on Spider-Verse, for example. There you go. <laughs> CAD and Photoshop were supposed to make it so you don't need, didn't need artists or engineers. I expect AI to bring in a new level, but it needs some refinement. Uh, aren't people also corrupting AI somehow with poison images? Really? Oh my goodness. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, I don't know, Fortunes. Like, I've, I've heard that stuff like that a lot of, like, AI is going to replace, AI is going to replace. I don't, I don't buy it. Um, you know, like, looking at... Uh, how business efficiencies get handled. It's very rare that you see some new technology come out that deletes an entire team. More often what happens is that team now then just leverages that tool and they have more time to do things in order to drive more value for the organization. So, you know, like industrialization and roboticization was a thing, but then like a lot of factory workers just moved to different trades or they learned how to deal with the robotics and you know society didn't collapse it was fine right um there's also the sustainability problem with ai when we take the whole internet as a base eventually it starts taking in ai images and then you get some weird collapse starting uh i'm not totally sure Queen Anne. I'm, I'm not saying i disagree i'm saying i don't know i i have a, I, I honestly don't actually know what you're talking about so something for me to learn about um yeah okay cool hey it's uh we got we got 18 minutes till the top of the hour and uh we're gonna do some analysis by the way if people are interested in watching a series of interviews similar to uh what amanusis and i did post pirate jam where we interview game jam uh participants on the stream and talk about their experience and the kind of their process for going through and uh, getting everything set up and coming up with their idea, all that sort of stuff. If that sounds interesting to you, let me know because, uh, spoilers, Emanusis and I are kind of looking at maybe doing that again for the Fox Hollow Jam. So it, it would be a lot of work. I don't want to necessarily, I got enough stuff on my plate already. I don't want to do that unless people actually want to watch it. But if people would like to watch it, I would love to do it. So let us know if, if that sounds like a fun thing to you. Um, there's been a problem with AI programs referencing other AI images as a source. So kind of like, uh, 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 to, to date myself a little bit, a Xerox of a Xerox, right? So you just get more and more corruption and, and bizarreness. Um, when's the next Fox Jam? Says Foobox. We're going to announce that on Friday's uh, award ceremony. So we're going to do the award ceremony and then we'll talk about what's coming next. But the short version is it's coming in July. So we're going to be doing this every quarter. Once a quarter, we'll be doing a new jam. Have I played Mega Bat on stream? We played it for a little bit. We played it for like 10 minutes. And then I raided out into Grumble of Pugs. Uh, but we, we need to do another play. For sure. Uh, yeah, more marketing time for that one. Yes, absolutely. Bluebox, we'd love to have you if, if you have the time for it. So, okay. Backpack battles. Backpack battles. Cool. I'm glad I got the, the mental model right there, Queen Anne. Backpack battles. If you're unfamiliar with backpack battle is, what backpack battles is, imagine a Diablo 2's inventory Tetris, and that's the game. And you put things in your backpack... And then your character runs off and beats stuff up based on what is in their backpack. That's pretty much it. So it's super auto pet style where uh, it's going to match you against echoes of what other people have built for their builds. 
And then if you can survive enough rounds, you win that run. And that's pretty much the entirety of the game. It's a, it's a backpack auto battler, 100% foobar. Uh, aesthetic gam gaming, why is there stuff falling? It's, it's because of uh, something we're going to talk about in just a little bit, actually. Um, hey, Inspector Gadget, good to see you. Yes, they have a ranked mode. Yes. Like auto chess? Kind of, Inspector Gadget, yeah. So you don't control your character fighting at all? You just let them loose, and they go. And they are going to fight using whatever is in the backpack. Playing Backpack Hero next? Maybe, maybe. This is already like a generation or two beyond Backpack Hero. This game wouldn't exist without Backpack Hero. So, as far as the stuff falling, let's talk about this menu screen, right? Obviously very busy, in a lot of ways. We've got our typographic logo up here. We have the little sword up here at the top, which everyone starts with in their backpack. So it's a cute little, like, unifying element. Like Super Auto Pets, exactly, Cubus, yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's a nice little typographic logo. I would argue maybe that this shield and spear is a little too busy and it doesn't quite match with this bag over here. This bag is a little low res compared to everything else, but whatever, you know, it works. Uh, all right, take care, Queen Anne, see you later. Uh, we've got our options here and they're in big bright colors and they're right in the middle of the screen. So your eye normally goes straight into here. I haven't necessarily had a problem with this, but looking at this from an analysis viewpoint, everything on here is very busy, right? These are big and colorful, which is nice, but we also have this, which is big. And it's like, does that really need to be there? Like I can play around with my stuff in the menu. Does that, does that need to exist? I don't know. I would maybe wager not. Am I reviewing Godot games specifically? No, Fubar. Is this built in Godot? I didn't know that. We've got our character stats down here, which is, you know, fairly standard as far as multiplayer games with ranked modes go. Um, I don't know why we have, like, gold or health or stamina, because there's no meta progression around any of this. I kind of just care about, like, my class and my rank, to be frank. All this stuff, I think, could go away, and you wouldn't lose anything. They have this weird, like, we need this to be the same as our <laughs> as our in-game UI. It is built in Godot? Oh, very cool. Made in Godot by Play with Versifer. Very cool. Um, it's needed to decide on characters. I don't yeah, those numbers don't change based on the character you pick. So I don't know, maybe that's plans for later on where that will be a thing. I don't know. As of right now, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Cubus and Fubar would know. <laughs> uh, we've got our class selector down here. I kind of like that it's always available. Uh, a lot of other games would put this behind some progressive disclosure, and I think that's also viable. Like, you know, putting like a drop down menu over here, you could select and pick something else, but I don't know. I, I kind of like having it all the way open. I don't have a good reason why, other than just it's easy, it's available. It, it kind of incentivizes me to swap characters a lot instead of trying to main something. And if that was their design intention, I think it works. And then we have this giant, like, whole big banner over here <laughs> with all sorts of options. And once again, it's just, it's really bright. It's very high contrast. And it's pulling away from all this other stuff, which I just, I don't love that. Um, the community wiki with the backpack. Like, it's kind of cute, but this is the only time you ever see this icon, I'm pretty sure, and it's kind of visually noisy. Why is it scaled down right here? Um, it just, it all feels a little bit weird to me. Like, it feels like all of these things could be a lot smaller. You know, they don't need to be such large tap targets. That's my opinion. And then we have our Discord, YouTube, and what? What is that? QQ? I think that's a China thing. China thing? That sounds racist. Um, something for a culture of which I am not a part. Isn't QQ Chinese? QQ website. Isn't that a... Like a portal? What is? Yeah, it is Chinese. Instant messaging software service. Yeah, 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 okay. Right, I'm not crazy, I know things. Uh, I know every big and semi-big Godot game by now. <laughs> Dome Keeper next. By the way, um, Cubus, I think you were the one that told me to reach out to Bip and Bits. I did send them an email. So thank you for that. Um, that's a game that pulled me into this whole mess three years ago. Nice. 
Okay. Um, right on. So all this stuff feels like it could be a lot more subtle. I don't know why we need this. I don't know why we need this stuff. I feel like this screen could be simplified. But as far as the things falling, I think it's actually quite clever. Because it brings in motion, which you're otherwise only getting through the player animations and the particle effects on the class. Which, by the way, is a good... That's nice. Like, these different particle effects on the different classes. Very nice. Uh, but this feels good this motion it doesn't feel stagnant anymore it all of a sudden brings you in right it's very nice uh just grab whatever you want don't hesitate to click me for info oh interesting i didn't even know you could do that okay very cool uh very cool all right so in backpack battles it's uh it's quite a simple premise the scrolling background on the viewers game yes on on um Shoot, the clicker. Um, it wasn't Cubus. Nectos. A Nectos's clicker game. Yes, absolutely. So we have our grid of inventory spaces. We can put anything inside of bags. We can move these bags wherever we want. Some of these bags will have buffs inside of them, like this buff that we start off with, the fire pit. Spend one gold to generate a flame. So every time we go into the shop, we're going to lose a gold and generate a flame. A flame will give us one heat. One heat triggers all items 2% faster. So this is a character very heavily based on attack speed, right? Oh, and buffs our max health? I didn't even know that. Uh, and then the fire pit, start of battle, gain four maximum health for each fire item inside. Uh, okay, okay. So you want to kind of fill this central bag up with these flames to get a bunch of attack speed and health. Very cool. Now, we have a shop. Uh, we have 12 gold currently, and we can buy items. So we might say, let's buy the shield. 30% chance to prevent four damage and remove some stamina from the opponent. We could also buy a frying pan, because why wouldn't you want a frying pan? This frying pan is gonna do extra damage for each starred food. And you can see those little hollow stars around uh, the frying pan. What that means, if there's a food item taking up one of those starred spots, then it will provide that buff, right? You're a fire person, you need to cook all the food. <laughs> so like if we had, you know, some berries, we could slot in one of those slots, all of a sudden our pan gets buffed, right? And so that's what these stars are. If you watch my YouTube shorts, you know that I'm a big fan of these stars because it chunks information together. This game is such a good example of Miller's Law and chunking things together and using mechanics to chunk them together to help the player memorize things. It's really, really good. Unless you want to cook the rock. <laughs> um, here we go. We got a banana. So we're going to slot the banana in. We're going to drop the sword out because it's taking too much stamina. Every item that you, or every weapon that you have, uses a certain amount of stamina. And if you run out of stamina when your item is on cooldown, then it won't get used. So, um, you know what, let's just get some pocket sand just to fill up the backpack here. Pocket sand is going to um, decrease their accuracy at the start of the battle, so... Um, fortunes, we're gonna cook. We got the plantains going. We're getting the bananas foster straight away. Okay. This person looks, but I don't know what this is. Rainbow badge. Items of all classes are offered in the shop. Whoa. After six seconds, gain one of every type of buff? Jeez. How do I get that? <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty... <laughs> solidly against me. All right, let's get a, a leather bag so we can start expanding out and getting our, our more food items. So we got some garlic. Let's slot that there. See, now our pen is getting buffed. Also, all of these food items have their own stars. So I can add, like I could put this next to the banana, for example, if I wanted. And now the Banana and the garlic are getting buffed, so the garlic is going to give me more shields, and the banana is going to heal me faster. 
but then I lose the flames in the backpack, and you start to see the puzzle now, right? You start to get where the optimization for this game really comes in. Um, this form of accessories reminds me of Terraria or Slay the Spire, says Ascetic. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, if we go here, we can see all of the items that we've unlocked in the game. There's a lot of them. <laughs> Rather, all of the items that are in the game. Not, not, not all the ones we've unlocked, because I haven't unlocked the Busted Blade yet, and I'm seeing that, so... Uh, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> and then you can get to your recipes, and these are all the things you can build. If you have items that are next to each other, like the spear and the glowing crown, then they will fuse together after a round and make this cool item. So, you can see I've still got some stuff I need to discover. Um, I think I'm going to re-roll and just go digging for some stuff that I can... Ooh, a backpack on sale. So that's another part of randomness that really keeps this game feeling great is these sales. They'll discount it by 50% at random. So we're going to lock that and lock that. And that, I mean, it just feels fantastic because you're like, ooh, I got a great deal, right? It's a really smart mechanic to bring in. So we're going to see how this goes. They've got a really nasty torch set up. Look at all that extra health they have. They have 55 health. That's wild. But they're using a ton of stamina. So that little honk that you're hearing, that's them running out of stamina and being unable to attack. So we may actually be able to pull this off, depending on if uh, we outlast them. Darn. That was closer, though. All right, Jack, have a great night. Good to see you. Thanks for hanging out with us so long. Let's um, let's start rearranging some things here. I want to kind of make some more room for... Um, I'm going to buy that. We're going to bring this down and then put that there. And put our flame here. We want to put as many flames as we can in here. Let's buy another flame. And then I think I'm going to sell the shield... And I'm not very good at this game, by the way. Uh, when you talk about Miller's Law in the context of UI UX, what do you mean exactly? Like the chunking stuff that goes together to make it easier to understand? Would you go as far as having extra menu to avoid having more than five, five to seven chunks in one screen to follow the same law? I think it depends, Alistios. Um, what I'm talking about here is that look how many squares of inventory there are. By the end of a run, you're filling out all of those squares. Or at least very close to it. And so with all of that, it, it, it can feel incredibly overwhelming to try and remember what do all of these things do. Think back to the relic screen, that, or the reward screen we were talking about on Throne of Bone. How I said like those nine icons are really hard to remember. There's way more than nine things here. But this is where Miller's Law helps us to consider things more intentionally because we can say, oh, you know what? We're forcing people to have, retain a lot in their short-term memory. And what they've done here is they've utilized a mechanic to incentivize players to chunk things together into relative groups. So just like a phone number, where, you know, you don't remember all the numbers of a phone number just raw. Like, you don't write them down from left to right. You do the parentheses, 818, 421, dash, 1234, right? It's the same thing here. So now, instead of remembering all, what, 10 of those numbers you're remembering those three different groups. And here you're not remembering nine different items, you're remembering two different groups. I've got my fire here and my food here. And then the rest I can kind of abstract out. Progressive disclosure, I can find out, okay, what does garlic do again? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of all it needs to be. And I can just remember, oh, this is my food group. So it helps us to build things intentionally for memory. Ooh, we got some good food in here. I'm gonna save those. We'll dive into the next fight in one second. Okay, we're back. 
What's a phone number? Just message me on chat app. <laughs> uh, hey, we won a fight. Look at that. We won something. <laughs> Go team. Ooh, blueberries is good. So, okay, so we can get the blueberries there. And now our pan is getting plus four damage. So now instead of being three to four, it's seven to 11. Which is, or seven to eight, which is great. Oh dear, are we getting spotted? That's fun. Um, I don't want to pin. <laughs> so, <laughs> Support. Bots. Right, there we go. Next. Bots. Good. Are you for real? I don't have a timestamp, Twitch. You know when I'm submitting this. I have, to, I have to go through like a five step process in the middle of a stream in order to report a bot? Who, who thought that was a good idea? Jeez. Bot, jeez, submit, block. All right, and you. Well, I guess that means we're uh, that much bigger of a channel at this point. <laughs> Bots. Bob links, block this user, good, okay. All right, all right, all right. Thanks for your patience while I uh, figure out how to moderate. We haven't had to do very much moderation on the channel up until now. Uh, the thing that's automatically saved to the name of the people you know that no one remembers anymore. Uh, click at the bottom is a setting to turn on moderator settings. Oh, shield mode. Oh, okay, cool. Well, that's good to know. If that if that keeps on jumping around, we'll have to uh, throw that in. Cool. Thanks for that heads up. Yeah, I haven't had to do that ever. My goodness. I guess that you know we're just we're growing up. Oh, mod icons. There we go. That's much better. Now I can like do stuff. Good. Okay. Um. Okay, great. All right, I think we're, we're, we're set up. Uh, worst part is that those might be legit accounts that clicked on that same name and lost control of their account, and now their account spread the thing very... Yeah, I mean, it could be. It could be a list, yes. A zombie plague. Okay, now ideally I'd like to get this out of here and reorganize... There we go. One, two, three, four. So we haven't lost any damage, but now we have extra room for uh, fire stuff. But we're not quite where I want to be here yet. I think we can keep on going. We have these things we need to incorporate. Um, put that there. Okay. If I can alternate, that would be best. Because you don't trigger food off of itself, right? Right? Like a garlic cannot buff a garlic. So I think this is good. We're now getting five buffs. I do want to work in a way for that pe pepper to hang out. So let's keep going. Time to open mod applications. Well, yeah, I don't know. I've always felt so. Oh, look at our health. We're at 79 health. I've always felt so weird about um, talking to anyone about moderating for the channel, especially while we're still so small. It feels very unnecessary. But I guess, you know, Risky Biscuit has volunteered to, to moderate on our Discord. Um, he's been phenomenal. If other people would like to support the channel, we could definitely uh, talk about uh, ways we can do that. So, uh, okay. So we need to keep on reorganizing. And that is the name of this game. So you can see how this gameplay loop is quite addictive, right? Because you keep on thinking, oh, I bet I bet if I just, like, move things around just a little bit, I bet, I bet I can do this better. So it scratches quite a lot of itches. You're very empowered around a very, very tight set of constraints. There we go. Nice. One, two, three, four, five, six. And, and that feeling when you set up something more efficient, great, great feeling of accomplishment. And then you get the instant feedback of going into a fight and seeing if it if it worked or not, right? 
Uh, very, very tight feedback loops, very good feeling of empowerment, very good feeling of accomplishment. Uh, and then social influence, eh, a little bit, but I would argue it's more of the other stuff. Um, just do what Poolbox did, and if someone jokes about it, make them a mod. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, I mean, you are his favorite, right? Um, just do what Irad does. Make everyone who dares to talk him to chat a mod. <laughs> That's a very confusing raid I got into. Shoot. Oh, man. Um... Okay, there we go. Good. We're doing all right. We're doing good. Frying pan for the win. All right, let's grab some more backpack storage space because with the frying pan, you really need a lot of space. Um, let's set up here. Oh, and we are completely out of money. We don't even have, we don't even have one. I'm going to sell the pocket sand to get the blueberry. And is there, is there anywhere that we are inefficient? No, we are triggering every spot of the pan. Okay, cool. Great. Let's keep going. Also, notice the very simple animations, right? Which is to say there aren't any. The players have an idle animation, and that's it. Everything else is just done with, like, tweening. Just dashing them forward a little bit, squishing and squashing. Like, none of that was hand-drawn. <laughs> and the rest of it is also just the items spawning in, hitting the player, making contact with the player, bouncing off, and that's it. Like, that's the whole animation of this game. Be entertaining watching the betrayal. <laughs> You have modding capacity open again since the Dome Keeper Discord server fell silent. Or oh, wow, I'm surprised. I guess that game has kind of, you know, wrapped up a little bit, hasn't it? By the way, we do have ads starting in just a second. So, yeah, I mean, if anyone would like to volunteer to moderate, I don't think it would be anything, you know, that's the first time we've had bots raid the channel, really. So, I don't think it would be a difficult thing. And it would, of course, you know, be all the stuff you'd expect from volunteer work. But uh, hopefully we'd be able to kick some stuff back as the channel grows. So... If that's of interest to anyone, reach out and love to chat. Definitely not the last. Yeah, well, you know, I hope not. Because if it were the last, that would probably mean the channel would uh, be done. <laughs> okay. Uh, ooh, a dragon egg. Mm, do we go for the dragon egg? That takes two rounds to hatch. Ooh, we have that. So we'll, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Hey, COD Zombie, good to see you. You made it! You made it in! We are doing an analysis of backpack battles. We've been talking about how they leverage Miller's Law and chunking in order to uh, make it approachable and everything. It's very clever. Um, I think even the idle animations are just 2D bone deformations, which is technically also just tween. Yeah, Cubus, thank you for um, helping me to get more specific with my language here. Um, what I meant by that was... Everything else was probably done in code. This was probably done in some sort of animating program, right? Where they would have to put the bones in and then move things around. But the rest was probably just, you know, displacing the character in code. That would be my guess. So. I do want boots. 
don't know. I don't think that's really doing much for us. We, we don't have a lot of attacks that would benefit from the extra damage. More fire. We got our backpack all filled up there with fire. Ooh, definitely save more fanny pack spots. Item insides trigger 10% faster, which is very cool. Uh, and I guess we'll just we'll, we'll just dive in. Um, they're gonna launch back up when multiplayer drops. Whoa! I didn't know they were bringing multiplayer into Dome Keeper. That's wild. Cutie bones plus animation player can be done in Godot? For real? I didn't know that, Cubus. That's crazy. There are a lot of things where uh, I learn about Godot and I just kind of think, huh? Wow. <laughs> Very cool. I need to learn that because I've been trying to um, uh, learn about. Uh, bone keyframing animations for a while. I'd like to do that. Ooh, that was very close. That was by the skin of our teeth. So now we've made it through five wins. We get a subclass, which I think is very cool. So now we have these five different things that are going to completely change how our character operates. Hey, there's COD Zombies over on Twitch. Uh, so we can go for a dragon build. We can go for um, building up a whole bunch of that haste. We can go for holy items as a crusader, which kind of makes us uh, regen and, and tanks, uh, tank and everything and dispelling buffs. We can go with a resurrection build where you start off at only 50% life, but then when you die, you resurrect and stay invulnerable for two seconds um, and, and do all sorts of cool stuff. And then there's the cryomancer. Gain 15 shield for each ice item. You may notice we don't have any ice items. If you look further down, it says ice items are offered in the shop. This is one thing about the game. I feel like the line height is a little bit off. Like, the for each of your opponent, the blank item, blah, 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 feels completely indistinguishable from ice items are offered in the shop. And that's a pretty big deal to call out. Ice items being offered in the shop? That's pretty big. Um... So, uh, none of these are cooking themed. Pass on the subclasses. <laughs> I've never passed on a subclass before. Is that a, like a viable strategy? This is why I suck at these kinds of games. Cause I like, I never consider stuff like that. Cause I'm like, well, it's here. Like, obviously I should be using it. Like it's cool. <laughs> Fire seems like the best option right now. I don't know. I never played. <laughs> um, we could go fire. I've never done ice though, because like I always get to this point and I'm like, I have other stuff. And, but, so I never go for the ice items. I kind of want to try it. I want to try it. Um, there, there are subclasses devoted to, to food for like the ranger class. I don't think the other classes have food related items, but, um, or subclasses, but there is one specifically for that very hobbit. Okay, um, I want to go for this. I want to go for this. For each frost on your opponent, the diamond item, so you can see a diamond on the top of the flame, has plus 2% crit hit chance and 2% crit damage. So this is a crit build. Okay, so we want to pour ice into the flame and then spurt that out into something to deal a lot of crit. So I'm going to pick that up. Here we go. Go, Book of Ice. Use two mana to inflict three... I'm going to unreserve the dragon egg. We don't really need that anymore. To inflict three frost. 10% chance to cast the starred spell scroll for free. So we can hook that up with a spell scroll. Okay. Um, I think that it only works if the current class has something that you could use more than the subclass. Uh, sure. Yeah. Ice sounds bad since it's based on the enemy also having a certain build. So it can be great in certain situations, but seems bad overall. How does How is it based on... No, no, no. Okay, so so the frost on them, we inflict. It's a debuff. So it's not based on what the other person has. It's based on what we are putting on them. So I'm going to put the fanny pack up there. I'm going to sell a couple of flames. And then put the book here. And then that there. Yeah, we can only really hit the pan. But if we try and hit the pan, we're going to lose like two different food buffs. It just doesn't feel quite worth it right now. 
You inflict the frost. Okay, I thought I was looking for the opponent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my last comment was made when you asked if skipping the subclass was a viable option. Yeah, yeah. So, so do you play this a lot, Inspector Gadget? Do you do you have the deets on the backpack strategy? Uh, backpack strategy, I guess, on the backpack battles strategy. Because I'm I'm very very newbie when it comes to backpack battles. They've got a lot of health too, 137, and they're going for a strong vampire build. So they're probably gonna outlast us here. We've got a lot of healing because of our bananas, but, uh, oh, we actually won, jeez. <laughs> We're like backseat battles. <laughs> oh shoot, okay. I'm actually very impressed that we won that. We've got pretty good healing. Ooh, stamina sack. So that gives us more stamina, which lets us uh, use more weapons effectively at the same time. Comment was based on other games I've never played this before. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Um, yeah. So, like, you don't lose options when you go into your subclass, but they do expand options. And so, like, trying to get this whole thing going with... Um, now this whole new category of items is available to you sounds really dangerous and bad. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Which makes me think it's got to be really strong, right? Because they got to over overcompensate, because you literally cannot build for this until you pick this class. All right, let's see how this goes. Ooh, not good. <laughs> they had a lot of regen on them. Oh, shoot. Okay. Okay, Frozen Buckler. 30% chance to prevent 5 damage, remove five a half a stamina from the opponent, and inflict a frost up to 10. Okay, so we have a couple of frost items, and we have this. So let's start... Um, moving some stuff around. I think we're going to start pivoting away from the frying pan a little. And we can put that... Okay, okay, okay. Okay, guys. <laughs> we're going to put this here. We're going to put that there. Banana comes here. Blueberry moves down. So now, the frozen flame is hitting something twice. Um... Drop, drop. And once again, we need to do that, maybe? And then reorient here. That feels good. Okay. Might want to just sell the old build. I think so. Um, I really do think so. Let's drop all this. I don't want to sell it until we for sure 100% have to. But we might be at that time right now. Um, let's get rid of... I want to I buy this... Well... Do we need to buy the backpack right now? I don't think so. I don't think we need to buy the backpack right now. Because we don't have anything really to put in it yet. Um, we also want to be getting a lot of chili peppers. Because chili peppers are giving us uh, heat which will give our Frozen Flame a faster activation to inflict more Frost. So let's keep an eye on Frost. Let's see how that goes. Um, I want to see how much Frost we're really putting on the bad guys. Starting off with 3, 7, 8. All items trigger 2% slower per sec. We were at 19, 20, 23? Wow. We are... So they were at like minus 50% speed there. Jeez. Meanwhile, we're at plus 28%. We're still losing, though. These vampire builds are crushing me. Ooh, we did pull that one out, though. Okay, good. All right. Um, oh, man, even more backpacks. Uh, I mean, that's really good, but it's like that kind of throws my plan for a loop. Do we go for another frozen buckler? 30% chance to prevent five damage. Remove a half a stamina from the opponent and inflict one. 30% chance to prevent 5 damage. That seems really good. And we got another Frostbolt scroll. Um, okay. Jiminy. What do we do now? <laughs> Where do we go from here? The bird is pretty good. Uh, Probably. I, I have used the bird a couple of times. I think it, like, speeds up everything that it hits, and it hits, like, a wide cone of stars and makes everything that it touches go activate more quickly. Yeah, it is really good. 
Um, can you fuse some things? I don't think so. I'm not. So if you mouse over stuff, this is another good uh, affordance that they have and help for the player. When you mouse over stuff, it will um, give a blue line dashing between things if they can fuse. And I haven't been seeing any of that. And if we go to our recipes, we have some frost items over here I haven't played around with yet. Um, I think I lost the opportunity for this one because I got rid of our wooden sword. And I think this is like you have to upgrade your wooden sword into a, you know, maybe a hero long sword even with a bunch of whetstones. And then combine it with something ice in order to get that. But we could probably be on the lookout for armor. My guess is this is going to be leather armor. That's what I'm guessing. So let's start buying some of the stuff. And really, we need... We need... Uh, we need some more weapons we can use. No cooking items with fusing foods. This game sucks. <laughs> you saw a line? Where did you see a line? Oh, on the, on the dagger. Yes, yeah, so the dagger can get turned into a fire dagger. A molten dagger. Which will use our haste in order to get buffed. I don't know, maybe that would be worth it. Could try it. Hey, Polygon Pilgrimage! How you doing, friend? Good to see you. All right, guys, we're going full pivot on the build. We're gonna go for our dagger. And we will make it molten. Uh, Polygon Pilgr Pilgrimage, we are doing a game design analysis of backpack battles which a lot of people in the in the stream have not actually seen before. So this is being a, a wild ride. And the fire didn't want to fuse with the banana after all. No, no bananas foster, unfortunately. Um, two, four, I mean, I could get another frost bolt scroll. Could like move the shield down and get another frost bolt scroll. It's more damage. Good. Can we, oh, we can spin it that way. Ooh, crit chance and crit damage. Does this do anything with crits? No. Is there a weapon that, like, keys off of crits really well? I'm not seeing anything on crits. Debuffs, vampire, thorns. Yeah, I'm not seeing any crit related weaponry in here so it's like re2 inventory system as a game <laughs> uh the claws have crits oh the clawed uh attacks five percent faster for every thorn after four hits gain and empower so yeah no no crit related stuff um so this is yeah like re2 inventory system or diablo 2 inventory but as an auto battler. So if you've played uh, Backpack Hero or heard of that, that's what this is. I'm gonna sell this because this just feels right. <laughs> and that's uh, my, the exclusivity of my rationale there. Um, so now we're giving plus 6% crit chance and 6% crit damage to our dagger. Uh, so we're gonna go into a fight. We're gonna go into a fight and <laughs> Now our characters will bash each other. It's thorns, yeah. Played a few games of that, but not that many. Okay, sure, yeah. So now, uh, according to how we have arranged our backpacks, our characters are going to go just smash each other. So I'm inflicting all this frost, which is making them attack a lot slower. Uh, they are trying to get spikes and thorns and debuff me and, and uh, activate their dark saber and everything. I'm going to speed this up, and they totally, totally beat me. <laughs> Not even close. <gasps> okay, so we have the Molten Dagger. Do that. Feels kind of weird. We lose some... Um, max health? We lose 8 max health? That might be worth it, though. I'm going to sell a flame as well to get a chili pepper. Because this food is still definitely useful for us, right? The chili peppers especially, giving us... Um, extra heat and healing because our heat we spend to buff up our dagger and we also uh, trigger our frozen flame based off the amount of heat that we have. So Elsa is looking weird. Oh, Elsa is looking weird. <laughs> yeah, this is her uh, rebellious phase that she gets into. 
where she decides fire's the cool thing. I don't want boring ice. Olaf, you're such a joke. Mean girl style. No! At one hit point! No! Okay. Uh, let's get some more bags. Do we want pineapple? Probably not. Um, fanfare? This is good. Randomly gain an empower, which is a, a buff of one damage. Or gain three mana and remove two mana from the opponent or remove a stamina from the opponent. We are using mana to cast our book. But I don't think we're running out of mana, because we've got a lot of blueberries generating a ton. Um, this is else if. <laughs> like, what could I even... Like, I could put it on that, and that would give me quite a lot of things to trigger it. So we could get, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 80% faster. So that'd be nearly every two seconds doing that. I guess we would be getting extra crits, so scaling our damage up would boost our crit quite a lot. Ugh. All right, see you later, Cod. Thanks so much for hanging out. It's good to see ya. I'm gonna go for it. As dumb of an idea as it might be, I'm gonna go for it. Ooh, we got another Book of Ice. Good, yes. Good, 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 good. Start the backpack battle. Alright. I'm gonna speed it up. So they have the resurrect ability, and they are regening like crazy. Wow, we are for sure gonna lose here. Even though we're, we're dashing out those really mean crits. Yeah. Wow, that was a lot of regen. <laughs> Alright, so that's the end of the game. So we get this very satisfying uh, trophies going into the uh, the treasure chest. We go up in our ranks. And we move back. So it's a very simple gameplay loop. And I think it's very powerful in a lot of ways. I think we can learn a lot as indie designers from it. Uh, with that being said, we're going to raid out to everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out today. This has been a great day. I've loved today. Uh, getting to do some game dev for the first time in a while. And I've bought, I've bought a laptop, so we are going to uh, be doing some more game dev off the stream in the future, which I'm excited about. We're going to go ahead and raid into Odd Oculus, who's making a Heroes of the Storm-like MOBA, and he's doing it in Unreal. So if you want to learn Unreal, we're going to hang out with Odd Oculus. Um, he uh, is a designer and web engineer and uh, a very talented background. And he's pouring his heart and soul into this project. And it's it's very, very cool. So we're going to go hang out with them. Thank you so much, everyone, for hanging out here today. It's been such a joy. And we will catch you tomorrow on our eve of our awards ceremony for the Game Jam. You're definitely going to want to be there. Once again, it's a reminder, on Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, right at the start of the stream, we're going to dive in. So with that, we'll see you next time. If I clicked the raid button earlier... All right. That's a good opportunity to say we are a charitable enterprise. If you like what you're seeing here today, if you like uh, the mission of trying to help people get into the game industry and get into game dev, like, follow, subscribe, whatever you have on your platform, and uh, you'll be a foundational member of seeing this grow and get stronger. So with that, we'll see you later.